Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Jimmy Dore Show. I'm here with Steph Zamorano and Ron Placone. Hello, everybody. I'm miserable. Now, we told you about this book, right? So that's that book about Trump. Now, again, the problem uh, that a lot of people are making is that there's big business in being anti-Trump. It also props up Trump when you're anti-Trump in a stupid way like this. So we've reported this already, that this book is... First of all, this guy, Michael Wolff, doesn't have the greatest reputation. He wrote some pro... Trump articles before the before he got into the White House, and then he wrote this book, which is all gossip and negative, unbelievably negative stuff about Trump after he got into the White House. So a lot of people are now questioning, hey, when he wrote those pro-Trump articles before he went into the White House, were those to be believed? Because it seems like he wrote those so he would get access, and now that he's got access, he's just crapping all over the Trump administration. So were we to believe, so not only that, but there's other things he's done that are, but I'm just saying, even with this, he's being questioned, right? And so now he doesn't have any, he didn't fact check any of the gossip stories that people told him, he just printed them. So it led to someone like um, Alison Camerota. She said, uh, CNN's gal, Alison Camerota, early Thursday offered a stinging disclaimer around Michael Wolff's new book, which includes allegations and accounts of of pal- palace intrigue in the West Wing. She says it isn't really journalism. We should mention it sounds like Michael Wolff's modus operandi was to let the people he interviewed spin yarns, the New Day co-host said, regarding Fire and Fury. And then he didn't really necessarily fact check them. He didn't necessarily need two sources. This isn't really journalism. This is very interesting read, but in terms of the way he processed them, he admits in the author's note that he let people tell their own stories and he printed them. Mm. So we've already reported that. We already told you that stuff before, and that's when we decided we weren't going to buy the book, and we were going to do what responsible journalists do, let other people buy it, read it, and then report on it, and then we'll report on the reporting. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I don't going to give that guy my money, but um, uh, some people did read it. Now he's out, and he's, he's also, no, he's insinuated, he was, well, that Nikki Haley, who's Trump's secretary of state, is having an affair with him. And the sub-headline here at The Atlantic is, in an age-old story and a uniquely tiresome one, a woman's reputation sold out to sell stuff. So he's doing this to Nikki Haley. Now, everybody seems okay. You could, Apparently, all your journalistic... Um, what do you call it? Uh, journalistic guidelines go out the window when you're dealing with Trump. Nobody cares if there's no reputation, if you spin conspiracy theories and tales about Russia and a dossier, which was completely corrupted and paid for by his opposition, all this stuff, right? So that not, it all goes out the window because we all agree that we hate Trump. So we don't have to have any journalistic standards anymore. And Glenn Greenwald pointed out that if it, if it, when they make these mistakes, they keep having to retract their stories over and over. People get fired from CNN People get suspended from ABC News because they keep making these huge mistakes reporting negative stuff on Trump and what Glenn Gre- and and so they'll tell you that no we we just make mistakes and Glenn Greenwald said if these were honest mistakes how come all the mistakes are in one way all the mistakes are in one way pushing a narrative of that's anti-Trump so he's got this goes to show you it's not just them making mistakes so and that helps Trump. So when Trump calls it fake news and then ABC has to lay off people or put them on suspension because they're printing fake news about Trump. And then people have this book that goes out that it's not so it's not fact checked and people are touting it over. This helps Trump. The way you beat Trump is to talk about things that he's not doing to help people and the things he's doing to hurt people. That's how you beat Trump. That's how you resist him. By talking about actual things that actually help people, not about Russia. And so now this guy, Michael Wolf, is now smearing Nikki Haley. And apparently uh, people are starting to draw a line with this because it's a woman that he's smearing as uh, as having an affair. So um, this is from The Atlantic. Uh, this is from the book that he wrote right there. She had become a particular focus of Trump's attention. And he of hers, he's referring to Nikki Haley. The president had been spending a notable amount of private time with Haley on Air Force One and was seen to be grooming her for a national political future. And then during an appearance on HBO Bill Maher's, 
He uh, last week he took uh, Wolf claimed to be in possession of information that was incendiary, indeed so incendiary that he could not, in good conscience, publish it in the book. And Bill Maher a- asked him, "Was this about a girl, a woman?" Yeah, and he's like, uh, and he said, "Absolutely sure." But he lacked the admitted smoking gun, and in the interview he said blue dress, which is referring to Bill Clinton's when he got uh, semen was on Monica, uh, on Monica Lewinsky's dress, and she kept the dress. That's how they could prove it. So um, so he's he's there on Bill Maher. He asked, what is, what is it that's it, you're, in the book that no one's talking about? He says an affair that Trump's having with someone right now, and he hints towards this, this Nikki Haley passage. And so Wolf w- wouldn't. Uh, Wolf would not, in the name of responsible journalism, name names. What he would do, however, was give the viewers of real time, and by extension, anyone armed with the curiosity savvy and 1799, a clue so they could figure out for themselves the identity of the president's alleged paramour. So everyone knew what his insinuation was. It was Nikki Haley. It was her having this affair. And this is the kind of smear stuff that he does, right? So this is his book. It was just people telling stories, none of it fact-checked. It's just a gossip book, right? So it's like uh, just a gossip book. So it's like a National Enquirer in book form. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? So that's what this guy's book is. And uh, so he... so. This helps. So, so we also showed on this show, someone wrote a book called Collusion. It's a New York Times bestseller, and it's called Collusion. And Aaron Matei from Real News interviewed the author of that book, and for a half hour he couldn't say where the collusion was. The guy authored a book called Collusion. That helps Trump. When you write a book called Collusion and there isn't any, that helps Trump. This, when this guy writes this book and there's no facts, and it helps Trump. Okay, just right. Would you agree? Would you would you both agree absolutely. that this helps Trump? It helps oh, Trump. absolutely. Right. And this whole rhetorical situation is, is it is a gossip column posing as news. Yes. Okay. So here he goes on Morning Joe Ball, and Morning Joe Ball isn't there, but Micah is there, our professional pearl clutcher. But guess what? She guess what she does? Morning Micah. Uh, gives it to this guy. Let's watch. So they're all, they've all, so it's funny how you can slander, smear without any Russia gate, no, inv- no proof, no mat. Everybody's a Putin puppet, no proof. You can do Red Scare and McCarthyism, but you better not try to say oh, another woman, even if she's uh, hated, uh, is a floozy and having sex with Trump. That's where they draw, they draw the line. Watch Point this. in time where we are as a society, when you're talking about a woman who's a high profile woman in the well, Trump administration, let me, let me, let me to interrupt. go after her without any evidence, without any facts, it just seems that it is so irresponsible. Well, first thing, I didn't go after her. And secondly, what I, um, what I certainly what I meant. His eyes are all over the place. Humana, that's your first humana, tell. Humana, Look at his eyes. Humana, humana. First Look of at all, his uh, eyes. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's what a I tell. Did that do. is a tell, big time. That's called a tell. What? Uh, what? Uh, uh, let me think. What's my? Well, hmm. First of all, I didn't go after her. I insinuated a smear. That's different, <laughs> <laughs> right? That's what he. Okay. Yes. All right, let's listen to more. I found it puzzling that she would deny something she was not accused of. Wait a minute. Oh, what I so now he puts it. He puts it. That woman who I uh, again was implying and uh, was kind of subtly smearing. uh, I wonder why she responded to it. That to me (laughs) is suspect. She. I'm. What? Yeah, and the thing she clarified was she was like, every time I've been on Air Force One, there's been other people there. Like that. That was basically like what she said. Yeah, she responded to. She responded to a smear. Mm -hmm. Yes. Go ahead. It's almost like she answered the phone. Yeah. Oh, she I don't know answered why she... the phone and responded. Yeah. Okay. So here's more of this guy. Can I just step in here? Let's let's put this next question: uh, the entire credibility of your book, which was written really quickly. Excuse you, me. Your book. Yes. Uh, let's 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 put it on this next <laughs> question. <laughs> which was written really really quickly. Excuse me. <laughs> Your book. Your book. Like, she's not taking any guff from him today, buddy. <laughs> right? Yeah. Did you want to say something? It was like he was surprised he had one. Ha! Like, excuse me? Oh, shit. Yeah, I did that. That's Hell a, of a weekend. Oh, hmm. I was proud of myself. Do you regret 
inferring anything about Nikki Haley. I, I, I didn't infer anything about Nikki Haley. By the way, they're misusing the term they infer. They certainly are. The term is imply. Infer means that you you are trying to come up with a theory off of information. That's you infer. You mm. Implying is when you... I'm not good with words, but you know what I'm saying. What I imply is what you do to, to someone. Else. I'm implying this. Infer is when you tr- you are on the receiving end of information, right? Is that clearer? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's me without a dictionary. That's pretty good. Here we go. What I inferred was that the president is um, fucking around. Um, is that m- many of the people. Are- believe he is still involved with various women no but you said she spent a lot of time so he's trying to dodge he's saying no a lot of people around the president believe he's still having an affair and they're like yeah and you implied it was nikki haley that's what they're and he's trying to say he didn't and he keeps now he's he's dodging okay private time with I, I got I, that's, I got it. that's i totally I totally uh, i mean that's exactly what people report and now and specifically that was about her bid to become the secretary of state so everywhere in the white house okay. they were suddenly in a in a in, in in quite a panic that this was actually happening Michael, which is why they pushed said pompeo she out has embraced it um i i'm going to go as far as to say that you might be having a fun time playing a little game, dancing around this, but you're slurring a woman. It's disgraceful. It's uh, and and um, Mika again. Uh, it it's uh, 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 mm. again. So if you're not smearing someone, you don't go uh, uh, again. If someone says you're smearing a woman, you go, I'm not smearing her, and then you go uh, uh, again, which is not what he's doing. It's, well, it's, he's also not using he's not referencing any facts. Right. He's, he just keeps saying, you know, every person in every area of the White House had concerns. What are you talking about? Right. Again, he's he's just talking. He's talking to keep talking because he's stuck. Right. Some would say, yes, that's exactly <laughs> what he's doing. <laughs> so now it gets now is when it really heats up. Ready? She has been accused of nothing. She has decided to deny what she has not been accused of. Right. Certainly, I didn't accuse her of this. So, again, he hasn't directly, overtly accused her of this. He's done it in a very scummy way. <laughs> He's doing it in, with innuendo and uh and and smeary ways, right? So he's like, I haven't accused. Yeah, you've done it actually in a scummier way. And now here comes his comeuppance. Mm-hmm. Wait, are you, are you I, suggesting I, you that are you suggesting the language is not uh, ambiguous in any way, and the, the things that you've said and the way you've come on. stated? Are, are you kidding? You're on the side of Morning Joe. We don't BS here. Well, I, what's read me the language? Tell, are tell you me. kidding me? I, I'm not reading well, you anything. Well, we play the Bill Maher. If you don't get it, <laughs> I don't remember. Read me the thing. About, I, I, I'm sorry. This is, this is this awkward. Is, You're here on the set with us, but we're done. Michael Wolf, thank you. We're going to go to break now. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Bam. And I can't believe that. Now, there should be a TV show just for when people have to leave the set like this. That Oh, let's watch. Now Michael Wolf has to leave the Morning Joe set. Yeah, they, they do like a post <laughs> a post interview thing, like in reality yeah. TV. Yeah, That's like, basically what this was anyway. Like on America's Got Talent, how they're backstage watching the whole thing. You know how they do that, right? Is that America's Got Talent? Yeah, right? it's all yeah. those shows. So they're like, oh, he's getting his ass kicked now. And they go back to it, right? Like, that should be a show. Michael Wolf storms out like, they're all wrong yeah, about yeah, me. Yeah. They don't know I'm me. I'm just printing things that that I was told to me. <laughs> That's all I did. Willy-nilly. I'm printing things willy-nilly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Jimmy, after watching this, I inferred ah. that Mika is really pissed off. Ah, that's what I inferred. I think she means to imply she is. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah. If, inferring is when you're deducing. Implying is when you're implying. <laughs> so uh, that was wild to see. I just So, again, the whole point, uh, uh, you never see that. Almost. Well, I guess Could you I do. Can I see it one I more time? I can't say you never see it because we just saw it. Can I see it one more time? Suggesting I, you that, know what? Are you suggesting the language is not uh, ambiguous in any way and the, the things that you've said and the way you've Come on. stated? Are, are you kidding? You're on the set of Morning Joe. We don't BS here. Well, <laughs> I, what's, read me the language. 
Tell, Are tell you me. kidding me? I'm yeah. not reading well, you anything. Play the Bill <laughs> if you don't get it, <laughs> if you don't get yeah, what we're the, talking the, about, I, I, I'm sorry. This is, this is this awkward. Is. You're here on the set with us, but we're done. Michael Wolf, thank you. We're going to go to break now. Bye, everyone. Wow. That's like that hacky new joke. Awkward. You know how people always do that. <laughs> Awkward. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's what that is but that's hacky so i won't do it <laughs> i'll just imply it. i'll just I'll imply, I'll imply that i did it i'm not accusing anyone of anything <laughs> i'm not accusing anyone of being awkward it's weird that he would respond to me saying he's awkward <laughs> all right god bless america that was fun so again don't don't do stuff like this this helps trump it doesn't hurt trump that stupid book helps trump it doesn't hurt trump uh all the Russia stuff that Rachel Maddow does helps Trump. It doesn't hurt Trump. Well, can I add something on that? It's like when you do that, like this is Hollywood gossip. <laughs> this is, uh, like you said, a gossip column in the form of a book. Trump is a reality TV guy. You're basically playing by his rules at something he's good at. What does Trump not want? Trump doesn't want policy. people to call him out on policy. That's right. People to call him out on how he let down uh, all the promises he made, how he you know, drained the, drained, drained the, the swamp, swamp, found his cabinet. People right. don't want – that's what he doesn't want. Playing the game by his rules, by making it a, a real-life reality TV show, that's exactly what he wants. So – Take note, Mick Resistance. You're not helping. Yeah, that's that's what's called Mick Resistance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But good for Micah, huh? Look at Micah. Foot, ah, stand it up. No pearl clutching that day. No pearl clutching. She just went right out. That was ballsy. Huh? Ah. I, I want to see more days when Joe's not there. <laughs> right? Because yeah. that seems like she took on Joe's... Uh, uh, cantankerous personality there a little bit, right? That is pretty heavy too. Like she basically just on a huge cable network was like, "This segment's over, over, over." over. <laughs> That's right. Boy, imagine how upset she must have been when she found out how much less she was making than Joe. <laughs> <laughs> and now they're married. So no effing in the workplace unless you get married. By the way, that's the rule everywhere now. You can't have sex at the worst play in the workplace unless you get married. Then it's okay. Isn't that weird? It's like the workplace is a church. Like, yeah. Ah, <laughs> wouldn't that be again? Now, if that came out that Joe was uh, was banging uh, somebody at his show, that would be bad, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially because the show's <laughs> called Morning Joe, mm -hmm. so it's his show. So he's the boss, and anybody he's banging has to be under him. Mm hmm. I think we can infer it would be bad. I could think we could infer that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, please make sure you're subscribed and come see us. We got a new, we're going to be in San Diego. That's what? right. San Diego. Whoa. What? February, February 24th. February 24th. That's a Saturday night. February 24th. We're going to be doing a stand up show. That's, that's right. Stand up show in San Diego. What's the name of the place? Comedy Palace. The Comedy Palace. 7 p.m. 7 p.m. show on Saturday night, February 24th. Link for tickets right there. That's just in a few weeks. So get your tickets. Right there, and we'll see you there. We'll see you in Austin, and we'll see you in Burbank. All those shows are coming up.